Allah says, I want you to struggle for me the way I deserve it. And I'd like to give you a comparison again to help we visualize this problem. You go for a job interview and you don't know any programming. You're not a programmer, you have no technical background, your resume under technology says Google and Microsoft Word and that's pretty much it. You know nothing else. And you go for this job interview and the interview says, yeah, well, for this job, you need the following coding languages and at least 10 years experience in this language, this language, and he starts listing languages. And you've had to have developed mobile apps for at least five years. And you have to have a portfolio of at least 20 projects. And he's going on and on and on. And you're sitting there, it's a 30 minutes this guy's going on and you're sitting there going, can he just stop so I can say, sorry, this is not me and I can leave and save myself the embarrassment? Because he's looking at your resume that has none of those qualifications and he's telling you how impossible this job is for you. I mean, how am I qualified for that? And at the end of that interview, he looks at you and says, congratulations, you start tomorrow. Well, if he said that, you'd be sitting there, no, I, I, that's not me, I can't do that job. I'm not qualified for this. Why are you choosing me? Allah says to you and me, you will struggle for me the way I deserve. My immediate response is, I'm not qualified. How am I qualified? This is way up here. And I'm way down here. I think you might have me, so somebody else might be a better fit for this job. And Allah then says, Now He says, He, in fact, He alone has chosen you. He's the one that's chosen you. First He gives the impossible job description. Then He says, you're the right fit for the job. And the word he used, ijtiba, is different from, remember for istifa, I said it's a choice, Allah owes no explanation. There's no explanation. Like he chooses prophets, messengers. You don't ask him why. But when you say ijtiba, it comes from the word jabu. And jabu actually was used when you collect taxes back in the day. And taxes were collected from those who were qualified, they made enough kind of money. If somebody's homeless, you can't collect taxes from them. They have to have a minimum kind of income, so they qualify and then you make that choice. Now let me make, put that in simple words for you. Some of you work, for example, you're fixing your car. Or you're, fixing some, you're putting furniture together. And there's a screw, and you have to tighten that screw. You have to pick the right kind of tool for this kind of job, you understand? You can't pick a hammer for this. You need a screwdriver and the right kind of screwdriver, you understand? When you pick the right tool for the right job, that's called ijtiba. When something fits the job, and you make that choice, that's called ijtiba. What I'm trying to get at is, Allah sees in you, and He sees in me, something that He decided, of all the other billions of people in the world, you should get to say, La ilaha illallah. You should get to say, Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He sees something in you, that qualifies you to struggle for Him. He selected you. And it's a wise, it's the right fit for the job. I don't even see that qualification in myself. He sees it. He sees it. And now I take you back to the example I gave you. The guy says, you start your job tomorrow. Clearly, you're not qualified. Even if you bring me to the job and sit me on a desk with a keyboard in front of me and you want me to start coding, I'm just going to write my personal story. Maybe my resignation letter is what I'll be typing. I don't know what else I, I can do. And he knows, and he says, look, I know you're confused. I know you don't think you know what you're doing, but I know talent when I see it. I've been doing this a long time. And I know you're capable of this. And I know for a fact, when I train you, this is gonna be easy for you. You're gonna be surprised at yourself. In other words, your interviewer sees something in you, you can't even believe about yourself. Allah Azza wa Jal in the next phrase of this ayah says, وَمَا جَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ حَرَجْ He did not place any discomfort in the religion for you. Listen to these words. Haraj actually means tightness of chest, discomfort, hard to breathe. This is haraj. He didn't put any restriction, difficulty, anxiety, pressure in the religion for you. In other words, first Allah says you have an impossible job, and even though you're not qualified, you're chosen, then he gives you comfort and says, listen, I know you think you're not qualified, I'm gonna make this easy for you. It looks impossible, but I'm the one who makes it easy.